All right, I want to give you some tools so that you can handle disagreements, arguments. And so the title of my lesson today is what? How to what? Come on, say it, y'all. Because, you know, some of you are disqualified. Some of you hit under the belt. Come on, somebody. Amen. Some of you wait till, you know, the most vulnerable time. And then you strike. Come on, y'all. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't saying that. Y'all don't want to show your true nature this morning. But I want to tell you something. Some of you play dirty, too. Amen. You know, you throw sand in the person's face so they can't see. Then you hit them in their stomach. You know what I mean? You know, all kinds of stuff. So, uh, and, and let me tell you something. Let me tell you something else. Satan doesn't play fair. Amen. He does not play fair at all. And if he can lure us into a fight, he will. And you as a believer of Jesus Christ have to understand a couple of things. So before we start, I want you to go to Ephesians chapter 6 this morning. I'm going to start there. And I want to show you something because I want to clarify something real quick. Maybe I haven't been clear on this, but I want to be very clear on this. Amen. And then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get into it. Amen. Uh, I want, want someone to go to, um, I want you to go to, um, to verse 10. And, and I want to show you something. To show you something really powerful. So we're going to talk about how to fight what? All right. We're going to be fair without fighting. All right. Verse 10. What does it say? Thank you, sister. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Verse 10. Uh-huh. You're about to say the power of his might. You think about the King James. I got you. All right. In the strength of what? His might. So he says, be strong in who? And in what? And what? Now, there's two different words. So the word strong and the word strength are two different Hebrew, Greek words. All right. But I, I'm not going to go there right now. But, but it's two different words. It's strength that you draw from. But it's also the strength that God supplies us better. Amen. He says, be strong. Because sometimes we get to a point in relationships where we feel like, I can't do this no more. Uh-oh. Amen. We, we get weak. All right. But he says, finally, brethren, I want you to be what? Strong in the Lord. Now, the finally is like a therefore. Right? But if you go back to verse 1. Guess what he's dealing with? Family relationships. He talks about children, husband and wife. He talks about fathers. He talks about you at your job being a, being a slave to the master, master to the slave. You find what He talks about what? Relationships. And the thing about human relationships, they can be very complex at times. Am I right about it? Seriously. You know, you can have a good heart, a good mind, but you can't control what the other person does, but you can control how you respond. He says, finally, be strong, what? In the Lord. And in the what? Strength of his might. What does he say next? Put on the what? Right here. Dressed for success. The helmet of salvation. I think I went over this yesterday, right? Breastplate of righteousness. Shield of faith. Sword of the spirit. Amen. Gird up your loins. Right? Feet shut with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You got to be dressed. You got to be well dressed for the battle. Watch this. And the problem with most of us is that we're so vulnerable and, and we're so wide open and, and, and watch this. And the enemy sees holes in your armor. 
And he knows how to, he knows where to strike. It was just like boxing. You know, if a boxer can see that you're, you know, the best place to hit, you hit the stomach, you're going to get it. Eventually, you keep hitting that midsection, you're going to get it. Eventually, he's going to fall like a tree. But it's up to you to what? Protect yourself at what? At all times. Now, watch where I'm going with this. I'm going to show you something. Problem is, when we go home, amen, we forget sometimes that even there's a battle zone. So we drop our guards, which we're supposed to, right? We're supposed to be comfortable in our homes, right? Am I right? Supposed to be, you know, man, I can, I can relax, But sometimes going home can be the very place where Satan knows he can attack. And you got to be careful as a believer. Let me show you something. He says, put on the what? Why? Why? Stop, 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 stop. What's the word? Feet planted firm. A lot of us don't want to stand. We want to run. But when you take your position, it's not to fight. See, your position should be that you're you're protecting yourself against what? No, uh, against what? I'm going to show you something. I'm going to help you with something today. Because the next verse is really, really, really important. And here's what I found out. A lot of us are struggling to forgive and to forget and to move on because you've been hurt and you something was said, etc. And you're keeping an account. But let me show you something. It is a scheme of the devil. Because look at the next verse. What does the next verse say? For our what? For our struggle is what? Okay, so hold on a minute. Hold on a minute now. My battle is not with this person. That person may be the very person that Satan uses to bring about his schemes. Yeah. Yeah. And what we do, we get caught up with our loved ones. With our spouses or it may, and and then here's the thing, if you're not married, it may be you're arguing with yourself. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, but the point is, here's the thing. You got friends and family members, right, that that you think they ain't did. They did this to me. They did that. It wasn't them. You you're attacking the wrong person. You're going after the wrong source. The source is not them. So you ever notice this when you're you always do this. You all, you, you never, you never do this for me. And you, 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 you. It's not the person. It's the schemes of the devil. And if Satan can continue, you know what a scheme is? Come on, y'all. It's a, it's a strategic plan, but you know, but you know what it really is? It's you getting fooled. The enemy's disguising the problem in a person, and God is saying, I'm trying to change you. Because if you didn't go off like that, you would have not known that that was in you. And some of us, we don't go off. Some of us, we're passive aggressive, you know. We know how to keep that thing in, but we do think. Look, look, look at what Trump did. Let's just use Trump as an example, okay? Trump. Use DACA. I'm just trying to show you how people fight. 
He found out what was close to their heart. Schemes. Because that's really what's close to the Democrats' heart. Getting them DACA kids released and all that kind of stuff, right? And he used it now as a what? As a bargaining chip. That's how people fight in marriages. I'm not doing this because you... See? But it's the schemes of the devil, y'all. I looked at that. I said, man, now look at this. Now, that ain't negotiating. It's not negotiating. That, that's a wide open picture. But watch this. Watch what he says next. He says, for our struggle is against flesh and blood, right? Oh, I'm sorry. See, but you see how that three-letter word just changes the whole meaning of it? But, but is that true when you get into arguments? <laughs> it's, it's, it's true, isn't it? My fight is with you. No, it's you. It ain't them. It's not them. It's the schemes of the devil to throw you off and live with scars and live with a dysfunction where you can never get along with people. Watch what he says. He says, but, it's, but what? Against what? The rulers? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right. Against what? But here's the thing. If you had your full armor on, you would have recognized that fight wasn't about you. Matter of fact, I pity those that argue with me. I really do. I'm like, you don't even know you're being used by Satan. Seriously, you don't even know. You talk about me. You do all kinds of stuff. You know what I'm saying? You try to get back at me. But guess what? I'm praying for you. Because the only way for me to win this battle in my marriage, the only way to be, win this battle, listen, uh, 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 husband and wife, the only way to be, win that battle is you got to get down on your knees and pray. You cannot fight a spiritual problem with physical Remedies. So you go to counseling. And then even in counseling, right, you don't want to listen. You want, oh, well, you know, well, you need to do these two, three things and tie a string around your finger and, you know what I mean, they remind yourself to say thank you and all this other stuff. And then even with that, you're just conforming to something that you're not. Until you're changed in your heart, you cannot really change. Y'all follow me? Y'all with me? Now watch this now. My fight is not with people. And I make a lot of people mad. Simply because I speak the truth. But I speak the truth in love. But I know it's not them. That's why I'm able to overlook them and still love them. Lord Jesus, I just said something. But I'm going to tell you, every now and then I have a human moment. I know when I don't have the full armor on. I know when I'm not, when my mind is that, when I don't have that helmet on. I know when I don't have that helmet on. Because I'm serious. I want to knock somebody's block off. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Amen. So I'm trying to tell you. I know when I don't have it on. But what I got to do is I got to recognize that the fight is not with who? People. Come on, let's say it one more time. The fight is what? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the fight is not with you. It's not. I'm not your problem. You're not my problem. We got a bigger problem. We got a deeper problem. Let me tell you what Satan does. You ready for this? He dismantles the spiritual foundation at home. So you stop praying. You stop reading. You get lackadacious. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You, you're not reading with meaning anymore. You're just doing it just to get through it. Come on, help me now. Come on, help me now. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I've been there. I was reading through the book of Chronicles, right? I'm reading through the book of Chronicles. I'm saying, Lord, I'm not getting nothing out of this. And then yesterday, you remember that passage? 
we dealt with yesterday? The whole month, right? And then one chapter just opened it all up to me. I'm like, thank you. You know what that, you know what that helped me with? Man, somebody's listening. So the battle is not with, with each other, y'all. We should never make the battle about people. Watch what he says. I lost my place. I'm way in Philippians now. Why did I get in Philippians? Y'all got me excited. Where am I? Oh, uh, Ephesians. All right, okay, yeah, here we go. Here you go. He says what? But it's against what? Rulers. Now, let me, let me explain this. Have I ever explained this to you? Huh? Okay, let me, let me re-explain it to you. Okay, you see where it says rulers? That's one level of demonic activity. So rulers, they, they like to control. That, that's on the spiritual realm. So those ruling spirits will go over different areas and they, 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 they're on that level. But check out the other one. Against what? Powers, that's another level. Against what? World forces, that's another level. Of this what? Darkness against the what? Spiritual forces of what? That stuff was wicked. When you evaluate that, where? In where? In heavenly places. So here I am, right? Satan knows how to throw us off, man. He got us thinking self-help. You know, I got a problem. I, 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 I need some pills to calm down because I got an anger problem. He got you focusing on the wrong problem. So watch this. You're not fighting this thing in, sp- in the spiritual realm. You're fighting this thing in the physical realm, and you're still losing. Your marriage ain't better. You're not better. But you got to fight this. You got to take this thing from a spiritual aspect. Right? But look what he says in verse 13. He says, therefore, now remember what the therefore is therefore. Whenever you see therefore, what does that tell you, Sister Eden? To look back at what? At the context, right? So what is the context to this passage? When he says, take up the full armor. So what is the context? Okay. Okay, okay, all right. The context is what? How to fight the battle? Okay. Oh, good. Now we're in the context. There you go. I know I caught you off guard, but I'm supposed to do that. Okay, now that ain't picking on you. That's, that's not, that's, that's in the spirit. <laughs> okay, now watch this. Watch this now. So watch this. So the context is the fight is not against what? Flesh and blood. So therefore, if you don't have the full armor on, guess what you're going to think? My fight is with you. I got a problem with you. We got to stop that. We got to stop that, y'all. We got to stop that. And especially, especially in the home. Right? So look at your handout. We talk about how to fight fair, but I want to talk about how do we fight unfairly. That's what I want to talk about first. Number one, what do you do? You are what? Unfair. When you are what? Somebody read it for me. You got to be what? Got to be what? Now listen, I, I didn't say be rude. Well, I'm just telling the truth. No, see, you're wrong for that. You ain't just telling the truth. You're being rude. But you got to be honest. Look at Ezekiel 18 for me. Let me show you how. And that's going to be our scripture that we close this thing with. But but, but look what he says. Ezekiel 18 and 29. Why are y'all so quiet? Look what he says. But the what? The way of the Lord is what? This is what the house of Israel says. Go ahead.
See, see, here's the thing. You know what's going on right there? You know what's going on in that battle right there with Israel? They were literally saying that God ain't right no more. That God's way wasn't right anymore. See, when we fight and we're dishonest, they were telling the people of God that God wasn't right. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a person can convince you that this ain't the place for you no more? You know, God ain't got nothing for you here no more. I mean, and, and that's a lie. But when we fight, we fight unfairly when we, when we don't tell the what? The truth. And can I tell you something? You got to be honest with yourself. And you know how we make up stuff? We make up stuff right in the middle of arguing. We make up, you always, whenever you say you always, you just exaggerate. You always cut me off. You always do this. You always do that. Now, let me say this to you, okay? In an argument, do you think that if you argue your way in and you win the argument, right? Do you think the other person is any better because you won the argument? <laughs> See what I'm saying? So it's never going to work out. You may walk away feeling good, but guess what? You leave them feeling differently. What's number two? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Read it for me. Emotional what? Uh-huh. And what kind of baggage? Sinful baggage. That's what it is. A lot of what we're carrying around is rooted in what? Sinful baggage. Amen. What do I mean? Ephesians 4. Sinful baggage. Because we're holding on to the what? To the past. And I'm talking about your last marriage. I ain't talking about the one you're in now. And you're comparing that situation to the last situation. And guess what? That's where you have your trouble. Because you see some, well, I see some things like before. Well, that you got a different person here, bro. I mean, whatever. <laughs> Sister, whatever. You know what I mean? You, you ain't dealing with, with Shanae. she gone. <laughs> you know what I mean? You ain't dealing with Pookie no more. You got Leroy. <laughs> You know what I mean? Leroy, Leroy got a job. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> he may lay around the couch, but he still got a job. Pookie didn't do nothing. And you paid all the bills. But every now and then you got a little flashback. And what you do is you keep holding on to things from the past. So let me show you how you do this. Let me say, let me say this to you. It's okay for you to get angry. All right? It's okay. Well, look what he says. Be angry and what? And yet do not sin. See, it's rooted, your baggage is rooted in what? In sin. He says, and do not sin, but watch what he says. See, this is the problem. Now, I want to show you something here that's real powerful in this passage. Now, remember what I talked about Ephesians. I said, we're dealing with the schemes, right? We're dealing with the what? Schemes. So, in order to protect yourself from the schemes you have to attack the problem with the armor on right and understand that the fight is not with people but watch what he says next he says be angry but do not sin do not let what let me tell you something when you sleep on it it goes into your heart let me tell you what happens next. It starts replaying in your mind. Let me tell you what happens next. It keeps replaying in your mind. Let me tell you what happens next. It then turns from a mind thing to resentment. Then it goes from resentment to bitterness. 
then it goes from bitterness, amen, to frustration. Then it goes from frustration to I can't do this no more. But if you would have just said, man, listen, we made an agreement. First of all, we made a vow in, in the sight of God. Now, this single uh, single and married people, whatever, whatever situation this is, I'm just saying, you got to know how to handle this stuff because it's going to come up and watch what you got to do. You got to sit down with that person. You got to from eyeball to eyeball, and you got to deal with the problem. Don't let the sun go down on what? What do you think the Bible is telling us? But see, this is hard for us. But you don't understand what this person did, for, did to me. See, see, now, because it's been lingering too long. Because if you can't see that it's not them, come on, somebody, it's not what? It's not what? Can I tell you something? The Bible tells us to do some hard things. But if you're in the spirit, you can Look what the next verse says. The next verse ties it back to Ephesians. What does he say? Isn't that something? Always around anger and argument, Satan is somewhere brought up. What does it say? And do not give who? Let the devil tear up your home. But you were blaming your spouse. You were blaming your kid. You were blaming the boss. You didn't blame life. You didn't blame your mama and daddy. You didn't blame your ex-wife, your ex-boyfriend. Blame, blame, and you didn't blame the past. Tell you, neighbor, we got some unresolved issues. You know why? Because every night you sleep on it, it gets worse until you become numb. But here's what happens next. You become emotionally dysfunctional and spiritually dysfunctional. For real. Every time you have an argument, we wasn't built for that. The Bible says, be angry, but do not sin. Now, he gave us the emotion of anger so that we could uphold justice and righteousness. Okay? Watch this. Do not give the who? The devil an opportunity. You know what that word opportunity means? I'm going to help you with something. You ready? You ready for this? You need to write this down somewhere. <sighs> Lord, I'm about to shout. Don't make him a passenger. That's what the word means in the Greek, a passenger. You got to hit that auto lock on them. <laughs> you got to put that steel gate in your front door. <laughs> you got to put on that full armor. You got to say, he will no longer ride with us. If we get in an argument, we're going to sit at this table and we're going to talk about it before we go to bed because the Bible says, and this house is built upon the word of God. So from now on, whatever issues we have, listen, I'm telling you something. I had to learn this. One of the hardest things for a man to do is to tuck his tail in, put his pride and say, baby, you know what? I was wrong. And I need, I, we need to talk about this. I don't know why that's so hard. I'll be walking out the door mad, like, yeah, get this. And then the Holy Spirit get me, like, dang. And then I'm wrestling. I'm walking backwards, but I'm, <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a pull to the truck. I'm serious. Because, listen, I want to run. I want to leave. 
right? But I, I'm sure I do that. I'm like, man. And then I, ba- I back it up. I back it up. And then I go in the kitchen. I'm like, shoot, I ain't going in there, man. Shoot, I ain't, I ain't fooling with that, man. I, shoot. <laughs> I said, no, I'm a text. Because cause my excuse for that is, if I go talk to you, then we're going to get into another argument about the argument we just had, about another argument, because we got so much stuff, so much unresolved stuff. So, because the sun keep going down on all these issues. And really what happened, what's happening in us, we got bitterness in us. We got resentment for the person that we love. I got five minutes, don't worry. I got five minutes. Huh? Y'all with me? Don't give Satan, don't make him what? The word also means to make room for. (laughs) He's in your guest bedroom, y'all. Listen, you done cleared out all that junk out the back seat of your car and he's sitting right there. Because you've given him an opportunity. And here's the thing. We know right. We know. We know it. It's not that we don't know this stuff. How many times we read this passage? Come on, y'all. But at some point, you got to start taking what pastor's telling you and start living it. I struggle every single day. But you know what I do? I go to that prayer closet. Let me tell you, that prayer closet is my escape. But when I come out, God say, okay, yeah, you're praying, but now you got to do something. Because all that praying, you can pray all day long. But he says, do not let the sun. The sun is about to come down. (laughs) And I have yet to deal with the issue with you. Go to that Proverbs passage. Proverbs 12. (laughs) <laughs> Twelve nineteen. Now, whenever you speak the truth, you speak the truth in love, okay? And whenever you, whenever you get into, whenever you sit down to talk about issues, talk about what you did wrong. Don't talk about what the other person did wrong. I'm going to say it one more time. Talk about what you did wrong. I'm going to say it one more time. Talk about what you did wrong. And if you think you ain't did nothing wrong, you're wrong. You're wrong for even thinking that because it takes two to argue. (laughs) Unless you are Trump and you're arguing with yourself. We'll have to edit that. What does it say? Truthful lips. For what? Forever. But what? A lying tongue is only for what? A moment. Look at verse 20. Deceit is in the heart of those who devise what? But what? Woo! Woo! Counsel, listen, can you imagine after you've had this disagreement, right, and you sit down, you talk about it, and you're like, now you're establishing joy. Now you want to be around each other. Now you just want to be happy, right? You know what I mean? You're back to where you was on the wedding night. You know what I mean? You're back there again. Amen. What's number three on the list? Oops. Read it for me. What's in the endos? What's that? <laughs> Ooh, I got y'all this morning, boy. <laughs> Woo, Lord, come on, say amen. Why y'all do that? Amen, amen, Pastor. Exaggeration. 
You don't love me. You never loved me. You love your ex-wife more than me. Uh-oh. Exaggeration. Exaggeration or what? Blame or incredibly what? To your what? Look at that Ephesians 4.29. Back there again. Good Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Now we went over this at the beginning of our, you know, of our study on the, on the tongue. But here we are again. Let no what? Proceed from, from what? But only such a word as good for what? But if I am what? How, let me ask you this. How you expect to sit down before the sun go down, deal with the issue. My time is up. I'm going to use my whole minute. Uh, <laughs> Watch this. Negotiate about the issue, right? But you're going back and forth calling each other's names. And, and I want to say something to somebody. When you say, this is how I am, this is how I always was, and this is how I'm going to always be, you're not leaving room for God to change you. Amen? We're going to pick back up next week, all right?